an auction in progress tonight in Hollywood. Lots of people in searchlights and ballyhoos. They're selling the personal effects of Margaret Elliott, the famous motion picture star. Around the corner from the auction is a little coffee shop. I don't know what got into you, Maggie, standing there watching them sell your furniture, your clothes, your silver. Going, going, gone. What were you doing there, Harry? Or is that part of an agent's job? Watching them pick his client's phone. Oh, now, take it easy, Maggie, and listen to Don't me. Don't touch me. You can do anything, can't you, Harry? But get me a decent part in a picture. Harry Stone, the great star maker. The gentleman agent. My friend. I am your friend. I know. I know I'm sorry. Harry, I saw in Variety that Joe Morrison's going to produce The Pinkle Winter. Yes, you had an option on that story once. Oh, I love that book. It could have been written for me. Harry, go to Joe, will you? One good picture is all I need. Maggie, you have to face a few facts. But they can't put me out to pasture. I was a star, Harry. As big as they come. Look, I've been your friend for a long time. I love you, but there's no denying that fresh, dewy quality. But something else takes its place. You tell me how to stay dewy in this town. I know, it's tough. But that's what the public wants. This new kid of mine's got it, Laura Belden. Morrison signed her last week. Laura Belden. Harry, go to Morrison. Tell him how much I love the fatal winter. That could impress him. One good part would put me back just where I was. Besides, I'm desperate for money. I won't get anything from the auction. It'll all go to the creditors. I was wondering if you... You're into it now for thousands. Another advance? Well, how could I justify it to the company? That's all you can think of, isn't it? Well, what about the years when your 10% brought you forty and $50,000 year after year? Maggie, John Morgan must have cost you plenty when you were married to him. Well, now that those westerns of his are cleaned Ask up... Ask my ex-husband for money. Haven't you heard? He's putting all his savings into a trust fund for his wife and kiddies. Just a suggestion. Don't you think I have any pride? Well, thanks for the coffee. You're not going back there, back to the auction. I don't know where I'm going. Good night, Harry. Hello, Nita. Why, good evening, Miss Elliot. I I know it's late, but I must see Mr. Morgan. He's home, isn't he? Well, uh, well... Uh, Maybe I'd better see Mother! If... Mother! Why, Gretchen, you still away? It's all right, Anita. I'll see that she gets back to bed. Oh, I'm so happy you've come for me. I knew you would. I just knew. Oh, Mother, I love you. Darling, oh, I've missed you so. Let me look at you. Oh, I have the most beautiful mother in the whole world. Now, come on in the bedroom where we can talk. Well, fine, but I, I don't think I can stay very long, darling. You don't have to. Just long enough to help me pack my things. My six months with Daddy was up, was up on the 17th. I was wondering when you'd come for me. But you... You are happy here, aren't you, darling? Oh, I like it all right. It won't take me a minute to get dressed and packed. Where are we living now? Well, you see, that's it. I... I have such a tiny apartment, dear. I don't care. I just want to be with you. But I'm gone most of the day, darling. Where are you? Uh, most of the day. Why, at the studio, of course. Mother... I've got to ask you something. Uh, darling, not right now. Wait until I've had a chance to talk to your father. But he's not home. He's on location. And it's something very important. Margaret, won't you come down? That's Peggy. I knew you must have told her you're here. Hello, Peggy. I'll be right there. Now, darling, you go to bed. I'll come back in a few minutes and tuck you in. Okay? Okay. If that's what you want. That's my girl. Well, Margaret, what brings you here this time? I suppose you're entitled to a reason, Peggy. If it's about Gretchen, well, you know how fond we are of her. She can stay with us indefinitely. She's a delightful child. Our kids adore her. Thanks again. John phones every day from Arizona. If there's something you'd like me to tell him... No, I... no, I don't think so. Is it money? Do you want more from John? More money? I never asked him for any. No, I don't suppose you have, but he has given you... $2,500 over the past two years. Yes, that's quite true, Peggy. It's also true that I gave him 25000 when I divorced him. I gave him that money so he could marry you. 
But I dare say you didn't know that. He has no secrets from me. Well, he got plenty of secrets from me. That's a crack, I suppose. Well, you threw yourself at him, didn't you? Batted those eyes. Told him what a great, big, wonderful man he was and how bad I was for him. That I was too busy with my career. But what he needed was a real wife. And he fell for it. Because it happened to be the truth. His name is Morgan. He didn't like being Mr. Elliot, living in Miss Elliot's house, entertaining Miss Elliot's guests. He wasn't a husband. He was merely a convenience. Anything else? You deserve to lose him. I've made him happy, Maggie, because I've let him be Mr. Morgan. Thanks for the inside story. May I go up now? I promised Gretchen. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. You mean, you mean I can't go home with you? That I have to stay here? Just for a while, darling. And, and I'll see you again just as soon as I can. Mother, there's something I have to ask you. Yes, dear. You are a big movie star, aren't you? Why? Well, the kids this day camp, they say you don't make pictures anymore. And Janie Marsh, well, her father's a writer, and, and she says he told her mother you were... Well, you were all washed up. Gretchen, you tell us, Janie Marsh, your mother is a star. I knew you were, but they say you'll never be in any more pictures. Oh, I'm going to start a new picture in, in three weeks. And when you do, can I can I do my six months with you? Yes, yes, darling. Oh, I'm so glad. I love you. You're so beautiful, and you always smell so good. I wanted to put on some of the perfume you like. But there wasn't any left. Why are you crying? Well, haven't you ever cried because you're happy? No. <laughs> That's funny. Yes, it is, isn't it? Now lie down. Go on, get some sleep. Where are you going? Going home. I've, I've got to work, you know. Why, well, you should see the pile of scripts they want me to read. I feel good. I feel all good inside. You just stay that way. Good night, baby. Hello, Mrs. Adams. Your sister and her husband stopped by. I left them in your apartment, as usual. Oh, thank you. Miss Elliot. Yes? Do uh, you know what I'm going to say? Look, all I want is one day more. You can give me one more day. I'm only the manager, Miss Elliot. Oh, I'm sure if you could let them have just one month. Don't rent. they know who I am? Didn't you tell them there's a contract on my agent's desk right now? I told them. But to them, you're not Margaret Elliot. To them, you're just another tenant who hasn't paid the rent. Well, don't let it worry you tonight. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Good night, Mrs. Adams. Good night, Miss Elliot. My goodness, Margaret, where you been? Roy and I got to get started for Alhambra. Hello, Faith. I didn't know you were coming tonight. Well, it's the first of the month, isn't it? You've been to some glamour party? Yes, yeah, yeah. a glamour party. I've been having a ball. I am, Margaret. I just been fixing a sandwich. Got kind of hungry waiting for you. Help yourself, Roy. Mama keeps asking and asking for you, Margaret. Now, don't get the idea I'm complaining, but between Mama and the kids, and you should see those kids. They're growing out of everything. I haven't bought a stitch for myself in months. Not a stitch. Why, the cost of shoes alone for those boys. Sorry. I'm afraid I haven't any shoes for 14-year-old boys. Seven sakes, who's asking? I was just telling you the family news. Aren't you interested? I have some rather interesting family news, too. I'm bankrupt. Broke. Get it? Understand? Oh, my goodness. I always knew you were extravagant and all, but whoever needed two Cadillacs and all those servants and everything? Well, we never said anything, Maggie, because, well, you'd have been mad if we did. But all that money you made. Money just don't melt. Oh, doesn't it? For instance, there's a house I bought for you. You promised to pay me back, remember? Then the hospital and the doctors when the kids were born. And for their clothes ever since. And their saxophone lessons. And for Roy's three operations. Ah, uh, wait a minute. Yeah. 
can I help it if Roy enjoys poor health? And you know what mother's cost me. Mama is living with us now. And if you think that that's a picnic, you're out. All right, now, now, girls, let's not have a ruckus. If you'll just give us the monthly check, Margaret, we'll be shoving along. Can't you get it for your thick skull? I'm broke. Here's my purse. I've got $3.85. Do you want that, Roy? She doesn't mean that, precious. I have given you two over $50,000. You must have some of it left. Roy, could I please borrow $200? $200? Margaret, for Pete's sake, where would we get money like that? Well, you could print it. If I'd only thought to give Roy a printing press. Oh, you're just tired out. You wouldn't say yes, anything. Yes, I'm sick and tired. Now leave me alone. Well, if that's the way you feel. It's just the way I feel. Now go on, get out. Get out and leave me alone. Will you wake up? Roy. Roy, wake up. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Look. Right on the front page of the morning newspaper. Just look at this. Huh? What do you know? My own sister. In jail. In jail for drunken driving. How do you like that thing? Kicks us out of her apartment and goes out and gets loaded. If the boy sees us, I'll just die. I'll just die with shame. Yeah, well, we'll just let her stay in jail. Big movie star. Huh. Now, go on, honey. Let me get some rest. So you came down to the jail, gave them $250, and bailed me out. That's about it, Miss Elliot. Are you crazy? I don't even know who you are. My name's Johansson, Jim Johansson. I read about it in the paper, and, well, you're in trouble, so I wanted to help you. Why you, of all people? Why not? <laughs> now, I made a picture once. It was called Night Court. I played a girl who was arrested. Critics said it was great. I guess they never sent a night in jail. Hmm? Next time you'll know better, huh? Where are we going? Not that it matters. Oh, there's a drive in near the beach. I don't know about you, but I haven't had breakfast. Okay? Anything you say, Mr. Johansson? Anything at all? Matter? Aren't you hungry? I want to know why you got me out of jail. Okay. Once a long time ago, you did something very nice for me. I was sent out to your house to fix the filter on your swimming pool. Ten days later, I'm in pictures. You got me a big party, a picture. It's called Faithless. Now, do you remember me? <laughs> Wait a minute. They gave you a new name, didn't they? Barry something. Barry Lester, of course. How I hated that name. <laughs> well, there's never been a movie star named Jim Johansson. Barry Lester, either. It was an interesting picture. It was the worst picture ever made. I took one look at myself and enlisted in the Navy. Go ahead. Eat your breakfast. No, I don't want any. How do I get to Hollywood from here? Why? I've got to get home. I'll have you there in 30 minutes, okay? Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Johansson. There was nothing I could do, Miss Elliot. After they read the papers, they changed the lock on your door. Anyway, I managed to take some of your clothes in a suitcase. Thank you, Mrs. Adams. You're very kind. I'm not kind. But I like to think I'm a human being. That young man in the car, waiting for you? Yes, I guess he is. I don't know why. Well, you come with me. I've got your things down in the basement. Well, where to? Isn't this the end of the line, Mr. Johansson? Oh, but you must have plenty of friends. Oh, sure. Sure, I'm the perfect guest. Who wouldn't be happy to have me? Okay. Get in the car. Well, this is it. This is where I live. The harbor's right down there in that little shipyard just below us. Well, that's how I make my living. And it's all mine. From swimming pools to shipyards, 
<laughs> Congratulations. I got it right after the war. Not too much dough, but it's a lot better than getting up in the morning and having some character slap makeup on your puss. <laughs> <laughs> this house used to be a sale lot. They told me it once was... Are you all right? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Well, first of all, you're going to lie down and get some rest. I'll find a lawyer to square things up at court. Just remember, you're lucky to be alive. But I shouldn't be here. It's something I've got to do, but I, I can't remember. I'll be out in the yard if you need anything. Now, come on. Lie down and try to get... Hello, Peggy. Peggy, did Gretchen read the paper? Oh. Thanks, that was very nice of you. What? Those nasty kids. But you told her, didn't you? You told her it wasn't true. Oh. Well, thanks for trying. Oh, no, I'm all right. I'd like to speak to her, Peggy. She's not home. Please, Peggy, I, I promise not to upset her. All I want is... Oh. Oh, I see. Thank you. There's nothing in that paper you want to see. And keep away from the phone until you've had a little rest. Are you a doctor or something? You're going to stay here a few days until this blows over. After that, we'll decide where you're going. Going? That's the story of my life. Only now it's finished. Going, going, gone. It's several hours later. In the little shipyard adjoining his house, Jim Johansson has a visitor. Hello. No, hello. Feeling better? Yes, much, thanks. Well, I suppose I owe you several explanations. You don't owe me a thing. You owe me an explanation. Do I? Why have you been so kind to me? <laughs> well, one of these days, maybe I'll tell you. Oh, uh, I talked to a lawyer. He'll take care of everything. I don't know what made me do it. Had a bottle of scotch in the apartment. But then to get into the car and start driving. Would you hand me that wrench, please? Wrench? Yeah, right there beside you, the wrench. Oh. You remember that scene in Vacation for a Lady where I was snowed in in the forest ranger's cabin? So? This reminds me of it. I remember the way I stumbled into his cabin half dead. Oh, terrible looking face, untidy, the dishes unwashed. Thank you. Oh, I... Sorry, I didn't mean it that way. I meant the mood. The girl, that was me. And the poor young man... Me? No, no, Clark Spencer. Are you sure you never saw it? I've seen the same story a thousand times. That picture made four and a half million. You know all I got out of it? What? $150,000. Oh, I feel very sorry for you. You know something I always remembered about you? What? Your perfume. Silly, huh? <laughs> what was it? Desire me. Very expensive. Mm, the names they think of. Maybe that's where some of it went, huh? What? Your dough. I'll tell you where it went. I was on top. Put my name on a marquee and there'd be a line around the block. I was sick of the tripe they were forcing me to play. Yeah, yeah, I read about it. So I put my own money into three great pictures. Big companies wouldn't give me a decent release, so I lost everything. They said I was box office poison. You wouldn't be bitter or anything, huh? Or wouldn't you? I don't know, maybe. They juggled the book. Said all my independents were flops. Of course they lied. I got tremendous fan mail. Believe me, you don't win an Academy Award for nothing. All right, skip it. I don't understand the picture business. It just won't give me a chance anymore. Look, you're confusing what was with what is. That's why you got drunk last night. Try to kill yourself. Me? Kill myself? If I were going to kill myself, I'd really rip the lid off this town first. Look at it this way, Margaret. It was swell while it lasted, but it's over. It's not over. It'll never be over. And one of these days, I'll prove it to you. You have a radio in the house? Radio? Sure. Five o'clock news. I want to hear what they're saying about me. Does it matter? Yes, very much. I have a daughter. It's going to matter to her, too. 
Oh, sorry. I wasn't thinking of it. Come on, let's go out. Since she was arrested last night in Beverly Hills and charged with drunken driving, Miss Elliott was released on bail early this morning and apparently has gone into hiding. Her whereabouts are not known, but reporters are now checking a rumor that the celebrated actress is... Why did you turn it off? You've heard enough. <laughs> I should tell that announcer the real story, shouldn't I? Margaret Elliott is the guest of Jim Johansson, wet nurse for sick folks, spending a glamorous holiday with a mechanic who bought her for $250 bail. Is that what you think? Oh, that's why the heavy bailed me out in a very successful picture called Night Court. Can't you ever think beyond a script? Ah, the truth makes a man mad. Stop it. Or perhaps you were always in love with me. Is that it? Lots of men have been. And you're a man. But you're not a woman. You're just a career. You were in love with me, weren't you? I suppose I was. I thought you were the greatest. And now? You wouldn't want to hear it. Just listen to your ego. It's all you have left. Margaret? Well? Oh, where have you been? It's late. I told you I was going for a walk. I walked into town, went to a drugstore. Try to buy some sleeping pills. Why? That's an intelligent question. I need a good night's rest. They wouldn't give me any without a prescription. So I bought a magazine, see? Has her picture on the cover. Laura Belden. Lovely, isn't she? So fresh and young and dewy. Yes. Yes, she is. Oh, that's not all. Here, you see this? Perfume. My favorite perfume. I stole it. Margaret. I've never stole anything before in my life. Jim must got into me. I don't need perfume. Nobody needs perfume. Forget it. I'll pay for it tomorrow. But what's the matter with... That's a good question. Going, going, gone. No, no, you're not. You know that something is the matter. And believe me, that's the first step. What am I going to do, Jim? Please tell me what to do. Well, I think we'll go sailing tomorrow. Maybe we can take your little girl along. What's she like now, Margaret? Well, I don't know. How can you tell what a child is like? Look, I'm so sorry about the things I said. Forget it. I'm sorry about a lot of things. Who isn't? You know, you thought I was doing you a favor when I forced them to give you that part in Faithless, didn't you? You were? No. I wanted to show Charles Humphrey. What did he have to do with it? I wanted him to the picture and he balked. It made me mad. I swore I'd pick out the very first man I saw and make him a bigger star than Charlie ever was. <laughs> I was the first man? Yes. Next day, I was down by the pool, and there you were. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you you were really something in that blue bathing suit. <laughs> really? Oh, I'd never seen anybody like you in my life. Well, you see, you don't owe me anything. Yeah, your perfume. Might as well keep it. Can't you just take it back? Can't you tell him that I picked it up by mistake, Jim? Tell him I... Funny. Hasn't any older. Hmm? Where'd this come from? A little drugstore near the theater. Must have been a display bottle. It's nothing but colored water. <laughs> colored water? When you grabbed it, you thought it was real. Just like a lot of other things you've grabbed for, isn't it? <laughs>
Look at Gretchen. She's sound asleep. Mm. We'll be home soon. You like sailing? Yes, it's wonderful. You know something? I haven't heard the word Hollywood all day. Margaret, if you can forget that rat race for one day, you can forget... Give up my career? Is that what you mean? No disgrace to be through with pictures. But what else is there for me? Well, you... You could go into real estate, uh, start a little restaurant, even be a sales lady. I've never done anything but act. Well, all right, act. Play it like another part at first. Give a performance. I wouldn't know where to begin. Well, well what are some of those fancy department stores out in Beverly? Magnum? Yeah. Sachs? Have everybody gloat over me and say, there she is, there's Margaret Elliott? Oh, no, no thanks. Well, then go somewhere else. Glendale has stores, Long Beach, Pasadena, and, and it may surprise you. People, too. I'd better wake Gretchen. Wake up, darling. Come on, wake up, dear. We're coming in. That's wonderful. Where? Doing what? Belford's department store in Westchester. I am now Mrs. Morgan in lingerie. Sales lady? Yep. You should see me in low heel shoes. They don't know who you are. No. The personnel manager said I look just like Margaret Elliott. Oh, you should have seen the performance I gave. When do you start? Tomorrow. Oh, that's swell. Knock them dead, Margaret. <laughs> Doing very well, Mrs. Morgan. Your sales record for these past two weeks, well, it's impressive. It's quite impressive. Well, thank you, Mr. Carter. I'm pleased you're pleased. Well, you'd better get back to work. Mustn't keep the customers waiting. Oh, no. Oh, miss. Yes, madam. Uh, that negligee in the showcase, how much is it? Uh, $39.95. Isn't it lovely? Would you see it, please? Excuse me. I'll get one for you out of stock. Harriet, that sales girl. That's Margaret Elliott. Oh, but it couldn't be. She's in jail. Hmm, that was three weeks ago. No, some mystery man got her out. I read all about it. Well, if it is Margaret Elliott, I think it's a disgrace. Hmm. A respectable store like this, hiring a jailbird. It's Margaret Elliott, all right. You can't fool me. Oh, I can't believe it. Besides, Margaret was much better looking than her. Take a good look, lady. So there's no doubt. Yes, it is Margaret Elliott. And it is a disgrace. Margaret Elliott waiting on a couple of old bats like you. Well, you... <laughs> you can't talk to us this way. I'll... I'll call the manager. Call the manager. Call the president. Call the fire department. I won't be here. I'm going back where I belong. I'm Margaret Elliott. And I intend to stay Margaret Elliott. <laughs> Good afternoon, Harry Stone Agency. This is Margaret Elliott. I want to speak to Mr. Stone. Oh, Miss Elliott. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. He's, he's still at lunch. Well, find him. And tell him I'll be at his office in 45 minutes. And all this time, I didn't know if you were alive or dead. Maggie, I'm your agent. Why didn't you call me? By the time I heard about it, they told me somebody had bailed you out. Then you did come to the jail. Remember me? I'm your friend. Then get me that part in Fatal Winter. Harry, I want to go to the studio. I want to see Joe Morrison this afternoon. Oh, I'm not so sure this is quite the right time. All those stories in the papers, Maggie. That's not good. Morrison is mad about publicity. Well, it is an angle. I'll think it over. No, you're stalling, Harry. We're going now. All right. All right, we'll see more. Just one thing you've got to promise me. Well? Don't start giving Joe any of your ideas. He has the ideas, understand? Come on, we're wasting time. So I, I dropped in, Joe, to... Well, to talk to you about Margaret Elliott. It's a terrible thing, Harry. That poor girl. They forget their people. They get up there at the top, they begin to slip, they get panicky, 
Joe, if you give her a part right now, it'd be one of the finest things anyone has ever done. She... Well, she asked me to talk to you about the fatal winter. But the girl in that story is 18. Laura Belden's going to play it. Margaret had an option on that book once. Very important to her. Everything is very important to stars. What do we do with them, Harry? What do we do without them? Would you... Would you talk to her? Why, when I have nothing for her? She's waiting out there in my car just to be inside a studio with Bucker. Oh, wait a minute. Do you suppose she'd play the part of the older sister? It's not a big part, but it's strong. Well, she ought to. You could sell her on the idea. <laughs> Isn't it terrible? You have to sell somebody something that's good for them. All right, Harry. Bring her in. Joe, I'm grateful. I'm very Looking wonderful, Margaret. <laughs> wonderful. I never felt better in my life. Well, I've got an idea, Margaret. I hope you'll like it. I've got the test scene right here at my desk. I'd like you to look at it. Test? Well, I know you haven't had to make a test for a long time, but if we agree on this role, it'll be a departure for oh, you. Oh, Margaret will make a test, won't you, dear? Oh, yes, of course. Uh, how old do you see the girl? Oh, uh, 40-ish. I see. You want me to play the older sister. And if we like the test, we'll build a part to take advantage of your talent. Well, that will be quite a challenge. Thank you, Joe. It sounds like a very interesting experiment. Well, it's been a big day for you, Margaret. You quit your job in the department store, walk right back into pictures. Congratulations. Well, I don't actually have the part, Jim. I'm not too sure that I want it. Oh, you don't mind if I do my nails? No, no, not at all. Go ahead. We can talk while they're drying. Well, anyway, in the picture, I play a strange sort of recluse. Oh, I suppose she's had a tragic love affair, but there's no reason why she can't look attractive as I see it. Anyway, here's the script. Oh, cue me, will you, Jim? Oh, wait a minute. I'm supposed to be scrubbing the floor. All right, ready? Um, uh, knock on the door. Yes. Who is it? Uh, door opens, Jed enters, stands looking down at Sarah. Aren't you going to ask me to sit down? You can do as you like. Well, it says here that she speaks in a sullen manner. Does it? Oh, well, I never follow stage directions. Oh. It's one of the first things a real actress learns. Oh. Uh, who's the director? Keith Barkley, New York stage, thinks he's slumming out here. Well, if I were you, I'd play along with him. Jim, will you admit I know more about Hollywood than you do? Sure, sure, but I just don't want to see you hurt again like those two old bats hurt you at the store. I wasn't hurt. I was just plain mad. Look, you don't get mad unless you're hurt. Jim, please, no lecture tonight. Now, come on. Let's start from the beginning. <sighs> okay, uh, knock on the door. Yes. Who is it? Uh, door opens, Jed enters. Aren't you going to ask me to sit down? Well, you can do anything you like. But it isn't like you to pay a social visit, Jed Garth. Margaret Elliott is once again on a sound stage. It's just a test, of course. But that doesn't worry Mark. And the part she's testing for isn't the lead. But Margaret knows exactly what she's doing. To the considerable annoyance of Mr. Barclay, the director. I'm sorry, Miss Elliot, but your makeup and these clothes. I'm afraid you look much too young for this part. Now, uh, why don't we... Really, Mr. Barclay? Women of 42 don't have to look ready for the old ladies' home, you know. Well, no, but this is a special case. The woman in our story hasn't bothered to keep up appearances. She avoids people. She's yes, a... I've read the book, Mr. Barclay. As a matter of fact, I was... Joe! Oh, how sweet of you to come down and see me. Good luck, Margaret, dear. Thank you, darling. Now, uh, you two be nice to each other. Oh, I always get along with my director. Are you going to watch the test, Mr. Morrison? Oh, no, I just stopped by to wish you both good luck. Bless you. Now, you and I know that this test, well, it's just a formality, right? Of course. All the best, my dear. <laughs> well, shall we rehearse our little scene? Fine. Uh, this is Mr. Bailey, Miss Elliot. He's going to play Jed. How do you do? How do you do? Mr. Bailey's a very good actor. He 
Briggs worked for me in New York. Oh, how nice. You can always use good actors. All right, let's run through it. Uh, quiet, please. This is a rehearsal. Settle down. Action. Yes. Who is it? Aren't you going to ask me to sit down? Well, you can do anything you like. But it isn't like you to pay a social visit, Jed Garfield. Cut. Miss Elliot, you're too light. This woman is sullen. She's not flirting with Jed. He's her enemy. Well, if she wants to win her point, she's got to use sex. But you're playing her like a young girl. Oh, do you really think so? Now, look, we've got to get this one point straight. Mr. Barkley, I have been in this business a long time. I know what I'm doing. I'm sure you do. On the other hand, I... Well? Nothing. Forget it. Then may we continue the rehearsal? I don't think we need to rehearse it at all. Why don't we just go ahead and shoot it? All right, quiet. Settle down, boys. This is a take. Ready? Roll them. Test. Margaret Elliott. Take one. Action. I'm so glad you phoned me, Maggie. Where are you now? Still at the studio, Harry. Oh, it went just beautifully. Was Barkley pleased? He must have been. One take, Harry. Just one. I'll call Morrison later. No, this is great news. I may have a surprise for you. When Morrison sees this test, it might very well be that I'll get the lead after all. Maggie, now, now wait a moment. Well, stranger things have happened, darling. Now, forgive me. I've got a million things to do. Well, just tell me one thing. When you made the test, you did uh, Now, stop worrying. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Jim! Jim! Hey, you're late. Everything all right? All right. Oh, Jim, I've had the most wonderful day. Look. Look what's parked in front of the house. Struck oil, huh? It's a Cadillac. They let me take it on approval. And you should see the clothes I've ordered. Oh, it's so wonderful to go in and charge things again. You wouldn't be a little charged yourself, would you? Now, come on. Stop working. Go inside and get all spruced up. Oh? We going somewhere? Rum enough. We're celebrating my return to the screen. Well, at last I know. So you got the part. Well, we see the test tomorrow, but... Oh, then you haven't got the part. Joe Marsden himself said it's just a formality. Hmm. Oh, Jim, you don't know what it means to be in front of a camera again. Well, are you just going to stand there, or shall I get myself another date? Maggie, there's a swell little place in the valley. Why don't we drive over there? Jim, don't you want to go out on the town with me? Well, Maggie, I... Don't make I, I, me beg. I, I've begged so much. You won't have to beg. I'll be ready in half an hour. Oh. What's the matter? Well... What about clothes? <laughs> Stop worrying. I own a very nice suit. <laughs> Please hurry, Jim. Please. Margaret. Margaret. Hey, wake up. One o'clock. Jim? Oh. You fell asleep. What time is it? One o'clock. Oh, no. I only meant to close my eyes for five minutes. Why did you let me sleep? You passed out in high spirits. You promised to take me out tonight. Take it easy, Margaret. If you'd gone out, you'd have only run into a lot of people. What's wrong with people? I love people. Wait till tomorrow night, and things will be definite. Everything is definite. I have told the papers. I've ordered clothes. I... You're trying to tell me I won't get the picture. What do you know? But this will put me right back where I was. Why couldn't you have waited one more day? Now, what impelled you? Impelled? Why? Was I impelled? You went out on a limb. Yes, I did, didn't I? Well, it's probably all right. I don't know. I thought maybe if I... If I made those promises, I got myself involved. If I went out on that limb, it would be so because I said it was so. And then God couldn't be so cruel as to cut me down. You suppose that was it? Why do you keep torturing yourself with all this? You must know by now you could... You could stay here with me. Margaret, I... I'm asking you to marry me. How about it? 
Jim, thank you. Thank you, but I, I, I can't tell you. I can't answer you right now. I'm scared. I, I'm scared. Help me. Oh, please, please help me. What are you going to do tomorrow morning? Do? Go to the studio there. It's going to run the test. Then at the risk of repeating myself, why worry now? Yes, you're right. Of course you're right. And it will be God. It will. It will. Harry? For heaven's sake, what are you doing home this time of day? I've brought Maggie with me, Phyllis. She isn't feeling well. Will you put her to bed and tell Robert to bring her a tray? Where is she? Downstairs. I thought I'd better talk to you first. She's been drinking? No, no. No, I wish it were that simple. Have you seen the test she made yesterday? It's horrible. What happened? Oh, she was testing for the part of the older sister, and somehow she got it into her head as she played it sexy and tried to look young to give her the other part. Joe Morrison says it's hopeless. It's just bad. Bad. They told her? They didn't have to tell her. She knows. Oh, you'd better give her a sleeping pill, but don't leave them around. All right, we'll put her in the back room. It's going to get a little noisy after the guests start arriving. Guests? Oh, good grief. I forgot all about the cocktail party. Well, it can't be helped. Come on, dear. Let's get her up. Thanks for everything, Simmons. But I've got to go. Nonsense. Stay for the party. No, I couldn't. I just couldn't. It'll do you good. Who knows? We've got lots of Hollywood brass here tonight, and we can... Look, an old friend of yours. Didn't Dave write a song for you once? Hi, Maggie. Hello, Dave. Remember? Do I? Did this tune for nightclub. I can still see you standing there, that black sequin gown. Hi, Margaret. Haven't seen you in a long time. Oh, hi. Phyllis, where's Harry? He's inside. Laura Belden just came in. He has to introduce her to some... Oh, here he is now. Harry? Just a minute, honey. Well, I'm glad you came down, Maggie. You better take care of Laura Belden. I'm all right, Harry. I was just about to leave. Well, can you wait a few minutes? Why? Because Hutchison happened to bring a friend along tonight, a writer named Richard Stanley, and he asked for you. For me? I don't even know him. He wants to talk to you, Maggie. Come along with me. I'll leave you two in here. I'll close the door, and maybe you can hear yourselves talk. I must apologize, Mr. Stanley. Harry didn't mention what this is all about. Well, I wanted to talk to you about a script I have. I thought you might be interested in it. Oh? Forgive me for staring at you. Your face, Miss Elliot, is still the same wonderful, beautiful face. Well, anyway, this story's about Hollywood. Oh, it could have happened anywhere. A woman could be the head of a department store, publisher of a newspaper, politician, anything that generates drive. Now, the way I've written it, she happens to be a movie star. She's been on a sleigh ride, but she can't face the fact that it's over. Why like half the people in this town. How do you mean that? Well, I'm not, uh, I'm not talking about your dedicated artist. No, this is your Simon Pure movie star, the one who plays it 24 hours a day, demanding, driving, ambitious. And for what? For power to stay on top. Go on, Mr. Stanley. Well, like all climbers that have reached such a precarious pinnacle, she cannot look back lest she fall. So she stands clutching what she has with fear, her only companion. Well, that's the character of this heroine, if you can call her that, of Falling Star. How do you get any sympathy for her? Oh, not sympathy, Miss Elliot. Pity, profound pity worthy of the gods. This is a great tragedy. So my character has denied her birthright, the privilege and glory of just being a woman. Thank you, Mr. Stanley. Thank you very much. But, Miss Elliot, that's a strange way to behave. Oh, 
picture stars. You can have... Mother! Mother, but what are you doing here? I'll tell you all about it later, darling. All that matters now is that we pack your clothes and hurry out of here. And it's all right. I spoke to your father and Peggy. You're going to come with me. Oh, Mother, am I really awake? Or oh, maybe I'm dreaming. You're wide awake, sweetie. And I think that maybe I am, too. You know something? That sounds like a great idea. 